as we enter these final minutes before liftoff, weather is still looking good. We have a 10% probability of violation. We heard a couple of key callouts. First, that engine chill has begun on the first stage. That means that we are performing a priming process. So before any propellant flows, the plumbing and engines will be chilled down to prevent thermal shock and boil off when that ultra cold propellant begins to move at a high flow rate. We also heard that RP-1 load has completed for the first stage booster. So that wrapped up the fuel side of the equation, and we are still loading liquid oxygen onto both stages one and two. Now, RP-1, rocket-grade kerosene, and liquid oxygen are the primary propellants for Falcon 9. Those are loaded separately onto the vehicle and chilled below 300 degrees below zero. Propellant is intentionally loaded late into the countdown. Colder propellants are denser, and denser propellants mean achieving more performance out of the same tanks. So simply put, the colder it is, the more mass it Thanks can move. Thanks for pressing four strong back retract. That's a great sign that we're on track for an on-time liftoff. So if you look closely, we'll begin to see the process of strong back or TE retraction. Now, at this time, everything is on track. We are working. We're getting some call no outs uh, from nets that you can't hear. We're listening to Norm and I are both monitoring and uh, we're hearing good call outs so far. Yeah, so far, so good. Um, we are definitely on track for this launch and, um, you know, go IMAP. Strong back retract has started. As you can see there, the clamp arms on the strong back, they will start uh, pulling out. Let's watch that. In the meantime, IMAP has switched off their RF transmitter. They are no longer receiving any data from the IMAP spacecraft. That's intentional. And there go the arms as we can see them open up. Inland, this We've is LD on Kazakhstan one, one with a uh, status check. And there goes the other. Oh, this is this is NLM. NASA's go for launch. Just heard a great confirmation. All right, the SpaceX there. launch director checking in with NASA launch manager Dr. Denton Gibson. He gave the go, another milestone, working us closer to a liftoff today. So, like I said before, all the analyses, all the work has come to this moment. So, kudos to the team for getting through those polls. Get ready for, in Joe Westlake's words, our cosmic carpool taking three <laughs> spacecraft, IMAP, SWIFO L1, and Carruthers on a million mile journey to L1. Coming up next in just a few seconds, we're expecting the completion of stage one liquid oxygen loading. See those clamp stage arms. Stage one lock load is complete. Great confirmation, right on time. And you can see those clamp arms are free and clear of stage two. Now, liquid oxygen loading has wrapped up for the first stage, which completes propellant loading for the booster. We mentioned these tanks are also pressurized using helium, and the helium is chilled too, so that it stays compatible with the cryogenic plumbing on the vehicle. During flight, that pressurization will help to force propellant into the engines as the tanks empty. And looking ahead a little bit, at the T minus 60 second mark, Falcon 9 will enter startup, and at that point, the rocket's onboard flight computers will take over. From there on out, the countdown is fully autonomous. Then just inside of T minus two seconds, the nine Merlin 1D engines will ignite, and once they're at full power, Falcon 9 will lift off the pad and begin its climb to orbit. After engines start, Falcon vehicles are actually held down until all systems are verified as functioning normally before being released for liftoff. It's still shining. Stage two locks load is complete. All right, the stage two locks load is finished. As, as you can see, as you look at this rocket, uh, you see the see that burst of locks coming off the side. They're just clearing out the line there. Nice little clouds formed when that uh, super chilled liquid oxygen hits this warm Florida air. It's a beautiful morning here on the Space Coast. Uh, Ground a little past sunrise. Out. They've closed out the, uh, the gases at the launch pad, as you can see there. The rocket is super cold, so of course it's condensing the moisture in the atmosphere and giving off those clouds. We're getting ready to lock in on terminal count. That's right, we're approaching the one minute mark at which point Falcon 9 will enter startup. Falcon 9 is in startup. 
Right on time. So at this point, the autonomous flight computers have taken over the launch countdown, and stages one and two will begin pressurizing for launch. Let's, li let's listen in to the launch director's final go. The launch director is go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T e minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power. And liftoff. Go Falcon. Go IMAP. Go Swippo L1. And go Corruptors. And we are flying three new missions on a million mile journey to track space weather. Good looking flight so far. Our tracking cameras getting a great shot as this mission climbs into the sky. We'll be looking now for those engines to throttle down as we go through max Q the time of maximum dynamic pressure on Falcon the vehicle. Falcon 9 power and telemetry are nominal. That's right, so coming up is max Q, which is the maximum aerodynamic pressure, largest structural load the vehicle will experience. So slowing it down helps to reduce some of the load it Falcon experiences. Falcon 9 is supersonic. And that will help us recover and reuse the first stage. Following max Q, we'll be able to throttle those en engines back up as atmospheric density drops. Max Q. I'm back, chill. T plus two minutes into flight, you can see all nine Merlin engines. You can at least see the the exhaust from five of them there. Beautiful shot looking back to the earth. Got a couple quick call outs coming up. We're gonna shut off the engine at two minutes and 29 seconds. Stage set at 232, and then our first burn begins at 240. Here we go. Stage separation confirmed. And there it goes. On the left side of your screen, you can see the first stage booster falling away now. And on the right side, our second stage flying IMAP, Swift OL1, and Carruthers. This fir first burn is a key burn, Norman. Correct, this is where we're trying to make sure that we're getting our, our, uh, our spacecraft here in their optimal orbit, just to start off with before we do our transfer into their, to their higher orbit. Fairing separation confirmed. There go the fairings, and now you can see yep. all three spacecraft revealed. So now our three spacecraft IMAP, Swift 001, and Carruthers are now exposed to the space environment. So one other note on these fairings, these are new fairings. The SpaceX, of course, is going to attempt to, attempt to retrieve, retrieve these fairings once they fall back to Earth on Just Read the Instructions, that, that beautiful drone ship that's sitting there in the Atlantic. And we saw the fairings falling away. I think you can, st you can still see. Well, that might be some debris, but uh, we, we got a good shot of them falling, and uh, in fact, uh, as you mentioned, they'll be recovering those, and the booster will be landing on the drone ship. 
The reason for the drone ship in today's mission is because we need all that performance from the rocket, right? That's actually correct, yes. So despite the fact that we also were launching due east, right, and taking advantage of the Earth's rotation to give us a little bit more both energy. Both vehicles as we are went. following nominal trajectories. All right, so we heard that both vehicles flying nominal trajectories. That is actually excellent news there. But despite the fact that I said before, we're flying due east to take advantage of the Earth's rotation to give us a little bit more um, velocity here as we got into orbit so we can carry a little more payload into orbit. We did need all the performance of this, in, of this vehicle to actually get our payloads to where they needed to go to do all that great science. One more quick call out here on the left there. You see the first stage there. You see the grid fins that are actually deployed. Those are going to actually help guide the, tr the uh, first stage back to the drone ship when that, when that drone ship first starts its, um, its boost back burn. Excuse me, once the first stage starts to boost back yeah. burn, the drone ship's not burning anything. <laughs> <laughs> you may have seen some But on the right on hand side of too. your screen, we are burning that uh, second stage. Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah, just noticing here in the great views of that first stage, you may see some soot during the upcoming entry burn and prior to launch as well. So during the entry burn, that will be the second of three total burns. Falcon 9 will be decelerating by reigniting three of these Merlin engines on the first stage, and that will cause the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, or the rocket's plume. And that's what deposits the layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. It comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and it builds up a little bit more on the outside of the vehicle, which really gives the Falcon first stage fleet the distinctive reused look. But we're looking out for that entry burn coming up shortly. The recovery and reuse of the first stage is what allows us to refly the most expensive parts of the launch vehicle, and that drives down the cost of going to space. When costs are lower, both government and commercial customers can launch more missions, especially in the form of rideshares like today's, and that helps to acceler accelerate research and development. We're looking for that entry burn in just under 20 seconds from now. You'll be able to follow along with the uh, Merlin engines relighting on the first stage with the telemetry on the bottom of your screen. Stage one, entry burn startup. Stage one, FTS is saved. There we heard it. That's the first call. That's the, her that's the call for the first in stage entry burn startup. We're going to be looking for entry shutdown here in a few seconds and finally looking at landing burn shortly thereafter, so stay tuned. This is the second flight of this booster, Stage and if all goes well, they'll bring it back down and fly it again. Stage 2 is in terminal guidance. Just 30 more seconds on that stage two burn. And then we'll cut it off and coast for quite a while. Quite a while as we get to the right point in space to fire it again to put us in our final our final destination. Yeah, just about 50 minutes or so. Stage two, FTS is saved. All right, so we'll be looking for that cutoff on the right-hand side of your screen. Stage one, transonic. MVAC shutdown. There you heard it, MVAC, MVAC shutdown. Cool views on the left with that booster coming back. Now get ready park to orbit. Shoot through those clouds. That's right, and we're rapidly approaching the landing burn. So got some trailing there. Uh, this landing burn scheduled to start Stage in just a few seconds. Burn. There it is, starting up. This will last about 25 seconds, and this will reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a soft touchdown on the drone ship. Just read the instructions. The booster is also equipped with four landing legs that will deploy for a vertical touchdown. So keep an eye out for that just prior to landing. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Beautiful touchdown there of the first stage, and that marks the second landing for this booster.